You're looking live at North Gwinnett High School in Swanee, Georgia. It's the second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV TV. Tonight's matchup is the East Coweta Indians versus the North Gwinnett Bulldogs. I'm Todd Court alongside my broadcast partner, Sylvester Williams. Partner, we have a good one tonight. East Coweta coming off a 56-49 win over South Gwinnett in round one, and North Gwinnett is on a 19-game winning streak. Their last victory was over South Forsyth in round one, 52-24. What are you anticipating in this one? This should be a heated matchup, a great matchup. East Coweta made that long trip up 85 to come all the way up here to North Gwinnett County so they can go and get a little bit of revenge. I think revenge is on the mind. I think two years ago here on SUV TV, you can check the archives, we had one of the greatest matchups ever on SUV TV. A double overtime one-point thriller, North Gwinnett pulled it out. So now those kids from East Coweta, there's still a couple of them left who remember that. They remember it, and they're coming up here for revenge. But I guarantee you, it's a it's a couple of people over there on that North Gwinnett side led by that really, really big guy, R.J. Godfrey. They say, hey, we're going to send you back down to 85 with another loss. It should be a great one. When talking about the Indians, it starts with Del Rico Gillespie, who averages six, uh, 17 points a game and 12 boards along with a little – about three and a half blocks. The, the senior power forward is a Kent State signee. Yes, sir. The young man, he'll be taking his talents to Ohio next year. He'll be playing at Kent State, I think, in the MAC conference up there. This guy is a guy who can give it to you however you want it, man. 17 points a game, 12 rebounds. He's going to bang with you. He can even pull out. He shoot that nice soft jumper on the outside. I like the way this kid plays, but he has a load, man. He's going to have to bring it not only on the offensive side. He's going to have to bring all of that. He's going to have to bring all six foot eight or six foot seven of, of what he has tonight on the defensive side also, man. This is one we're waiting on. Speaking of a load for the Bulldogs, they're led by Clemson commit R.J. Godfrey, the senior small forward who averages 16 a game, can take it to the rack. Now, every time I say where R.J. Godfrey's going, I have to cover my mouth. I can't say the C word out loud because I'm a University of South Carolina Gamecock graduate. But they have a good one. They have a really, really good one going up there to my country cousins in Clemson. I'm telling you, R.J. Godfrey, he is a player. We've been watching him for the past uh, three or four years here at North Gwinnett. We cover the R we cover the Jared Cook Classic, Tip-Off Classic every year. So we get to see this kid grow and this kid play. Now he is a guy, he can give it to you how you want. He can shoot it on the outside. He'll bring the ball up court. And when it gets down into it, he loves to play what I call bully ball. He is a force down low, and it's not many people in the state of Georgia who can stand in front of this guy when he plays defense. He is a bully. He plays that bully ball down low. R.J. Godfrey, you want to watch. This kid brings it, and one thing I like about him, he loves the spotlight. So this would be a great one. Well, he's gonna he's a Clemson commit for R.J. Godfrey, and if you like the spotlight, you're heading to the ACC, no question about it. Time for Sylvester's keys to the game. What are they, sir? Concentrate, key number one, concentrate on the game. Don't let outside factors influence you or disturb you. Right now, East Coweta, these young men want a little bit of revenge. They've been talking about it. They've been thinking about it. They do not like how their season ended, and one of the best teams that East Coweta's ever had, they don't like how that season ended two years ago, and they want this rematch. Here's the thing. They can't concentrate on two years ago. They have to concentrate on today. They have to concentrate on February 25th and what happens today. Now, North Gwinnett, they can't worry about two years ago either. They can't worry about how they won two years ago. They can only worry about what's going on on February 25th. Well, we'll find out what's going to happen today. Tip-off is next. This is the second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV TV. from your
your box score with Cerebro Sports, the official analytics partner of SUV TV. Start with stats with Cerebro Sports and make every game count. Visit CerebroSports.com for more information and check us out at all SUV TV events. At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI, and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, try CDW Amplify Development Services. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your Buick parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head of display. They're here. Hey, hit the field, warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life. Because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. And tonight's winning numbers are 18, 18 55, 39, 71, 10, and 43. 43. Those numbers again. We won! Yes! <laughs> Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. I'll hold on to that. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. School second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV TV. The East Coweed Indians versus the North Gwinnett Bulldogs. Tonight's starting lineups for the visitors. The guards are Colton, Cameron, Adams, and Eden. The Ford is Del Rico Gillespie for East Coweed and head coach Royal Maxwell for North Gwinnett. The guards are Allard, Carlberg, Gary, and the forward, the forwards are RJ Godfrey, and of course the center is Julian Walker for head coach Matt Gardner. North Gwinnett wearing white, he's Coweta, Wearing gold, East Coweta will be going to my left. North Gwinnett will be going to my right. And partner, I'm ready for this one. Man, I am ready. The crowd is ready, man. We're right behind this senior, this senior, I mean, student section, man. They're in all white, and man, they're packed out here, man. They're jam, they're jam packed shoulder to shoulder in this student section, man. We're, oh, this is going to be a good one. Godfrey over to Allard after the tip. Allard with it right side. Now they'll get it over there to Godfrey, over to Lard. They'll pass it all the way around. Get it down low. Shot up and no good. Picked up there by Gillespie. Del Rico. Over to Colton, back over to Del Rico. Now they'll get it down low and driving there. Shot blocked. Eden had his shot blocked. It's loose. And picked up there by Allard, and he'll bring it up left side. And basketball is loose, and they pick it up. A little bit of sloppy basketball in the opening, the opening go around, man. The teams have to calm down, get ready to play. Colton left side, got it over there to Adams. Now over to Eden right side, all the way over to Colton left side. And I see I like this now. North Gwinnett's coming out. That looks like a 3-2 zone, a little bit of 3-2 zone. They're sending, and you know, what East Coweta did, they sent the cutters through, trying to figure out what type of defense they're playing. Now look at that beautiful, well-designed play. Colton for a three, missed it, rebound up. Shot is no good there by Adams. The rim wasn't kind, rebound, and he, they put it in. Directo. Gillespie. Look at the big man getting that rebound. That's rebound number two, man. I'm keeping the stats on these two guys, man. 
Gillespie and R.J. Godfrey. I want to keep these rebound stats and what they do tonight. Cameron with a basketball jumper is no good. Grabbed there by Adams. He'll bring it up. 6-2, 6 and 20 to go in the first quarter. Drive into the basket. Missed there by Godfrey. That's what I, I like to see that. He, Godfrey missed that layup, but I like to see that aggressive bully ball type. See, you see that form? You see that body that big man has, man? Man, Godfrey should be, he should be going to Clemson and playing tight end or something, man. He's, he's a big fella, man. I love to see the bully ball out of R.J. Godfrey, man. And, and that's what it's going to take. It's going to take a lot of that. That matchup between Godfrey and Gillespie, man, I, I, I'm waiting for that one. That's what I want to see. Right side there, Eden with a basketball. Away over now to Colton. Colton with the left side being guarded by Carlberg. Now right side, he'll get it back to Colton. Colton driving. He'll kick it over there to Eden. Eden left side, baseline. Bounce pass and taken away by Seitz. Seitz dribble driving all the way to the basket off the glass and in. Dylan Gary, man. I like Dylan Gary. He's just such a crafty player, man. He's a, he's a big guy, but he doesn't play in the paint, man. He's an all-star wide receiver who has a knockdown three. You don't want to let him get any breathing room. When Gary gets some breathing room, he's going to knock it down from deep. But I like how crafty he is when he goes to the basket. Yes, that basket was by Gary. Now we have it right, left side. Cameron on the jumper. No good. Rebound. Picked up by Allard, and they quick it up, bring it up quickly. That was by Carlberg over to Allard, back over to Carlberg. Carlberg has on that mask today, man. You know, he's so, Carlberg's so pretty, he has to wear that mask. Doesn't want anybody to touch his face. He's a pretty guy, pretty guy. Now they get it down left side, and they missed Godfrey with a pass and turnover four and 47 to go. First quarter tied at two. You know, this is an uncharacteristically sloppy game for both teams. You know, both teams playing a little bit more sloppy than they're used to playing. So Gary yeah. on that basket there on the replay. Tied it two. Dribble drive there by Colton. He got away with a travel. Cameron with it. Cameron with it right side. Now being you, guarded by Godfrey. If you notice, Sammy Moss just got back into the, got, got into the game. That's Moss with the ball right there. He didn't get the start, but Moss is uh, one of the big-time players, averaging about 14 points a game for East Coweta. Dribble drive there, pass down, low up and in. Gillespie, Del Rico. 4-2, four, 4-5 four to go first quarter. Yeah, they have something special going up there to Ohio, man. Del Rico's a really good player. Godfrey on the kick and drive, and that shot's good. That's a three ball there by Carlberg, and it's 5-4, 3-50 to go in the first quarter. Gunner has the right name, man, because he'll shoot you down, man. He's a nice shot on the outside from Gunner. Shot there, missed. And they'll bring it up very quickly to, to Godfrey, right side. He'll pull it back out. He'll give it to Allard. Allard for three, and that's good. So two three balls there, and now it's 8-4, 3-28 to go first quarter. All day long for Thomas Allard. Uh, young kid, he's going to Lincoln Memorial. He's another kid. I sat in this gym and watched Allard. Allard uh, well, that was at Marietta. I watched Allard hit about nine three-pointers in one game, man. Thomas Adams with a basketball dribble drive. It's blocked. Blocked by Godfrey. They tie it up and the possession arrow will go to the Bulldogs. Good job of Godfrey, man. Just look at him. Just getting big. You know, he didn't jump, didn't cause the foul. He just got big, got his hands up there to block that shot, man. Godfrey's a player. He is a player. Three and six to go. First quarter, North Gwinnett over East Coweta, eight to four. Couple of three-point shots there by the Bulldogs, giving them the four-point cushion. Substitutions are in. and We'll be ready to go here shortly. What do you see so far? You know, game is a little bit more sloppy than I would expect. These are two both well-coached teams, man. Both of these coaches, you know, they're two really, really good coaches, and it's kind of more sloppy 
than I would expect. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it's a lot sloppy, more sloppy than either team would expect. But as you can see, North Gwinnett knocking down those threes, man. That's what keeps North Gwinnett winning. That's why they're 8-0 in the region. That's why they only lost three games this year. These kids can shoot from the outside, man. They can knock down that long-range jumper. So we have a timeout here. I think they're trying to clean up something. Got some spills or something over there on the side, man. Think a little bit of nerves. This is a really big game. I mean, you're in the Sweet 16. Do you think nerves have a little bit to do with it, and, and maybe you know, from the eve going? You know what? I, I would think that if it was anybody else. But you have two programs who, you know, recent history, this is what is expected. The Sweet 16, you know, they're expected to make it there. They, they have these expectations set on themselves. I remember years ago when Matt Garner first took over the program at North, at, uh, North Gwinnett, every year at the Jerry Cook Classic, they would play the toughest teams in the state, and they would get beat bad. But then they changed this program. They, he's built this program. Oh, look at that. Look Off at the that. window there for Gary. 2 and 45 to go in the first quarter. 10-4, North Gwinnett. Cameron on the spin. He'll have to kick it back out. Now left side with it. Colton, he lost the ball, but he got to Cameron. And you can hear that student section behind me. You want to move on the other side of the court, man. This student section is rough. There's Colton for a three ball, and that's good. Austin Colton for long range. 10-7. Allard will bring it up very quickly, and that's turned over. As Gary did not see him throw the basketball to him on a baseball pass down the court. Interesting start so far. Interesting start, man. Three-point ball game, two minutes, 15 seconds to go. A little bit lower scoring than I thought, but once these two teams get settled in, Rose Venner on Colton, and Colton to go right by him, kick it back out. Looking forward to Adams. He just thought about the three, shot that, missed. Rebound no good there. Uh, Gillespie uh, missed that, and they'll bring it up very quickly there. As Allard brought it up quickly, and he got it to his teammate. He'll dribble drive there. That was Gross Venner, and there's the three ball by Gary, and he's on fire, 13-7, 1-43 to go in a quarter. Dylan Gary, man, that's what he does. If you leave these kids from North Gwinnett open, they will make you pay. They can hit that three ball. Colton with a basketball. Got it down low to Del Rick, Del Rico Gillespie. They turn it over. And here comes Allard with it. Allard with it. He'll get it up there to Godfrey. Godfrey will get it over there to Grosvenor, and that shot's no good. And we're going to get a whistle. That, that was one of those team team heat check moments right there from Amaru. Amaru, Amaru thought, found himself too wide open. He said, I had to shoot it. But look at this. Look at Dylan Gary, man. Boom. Beautiful shot on the outside. He has the hot end so far, no doubt about it. 1 in 14 to go in the quarter. Cameron bringing up left side. Throws Venner on him. They'll get it over there to Del Rico Gillespie. Now down to him. As he received the basketball from Moss. That shot's missed. Moss for a three ball. That's no good. Still loose rebound by Godfrey. And we've got a foul. Now, here's the thing. If you're East Coweta, I want to see them work through Gillespie, Del Rico, a, a lot more. I want to see, even though he took that shot and missed that one on the, on the baseline, I still want to see the ball go through him on every possession. Give it to your stud. He's there for a reason. Godfrey with a basketball over to Grosvenor. Grosvenor down low to Godfrey. He'll kick it back out, dribble drive. Good pass there from Washington. Back to Godfrey, and that's a good give and go there. Great give and go, man. Give it to the big man down low. Once he's down that low, there's not too many teams in America who can stop R.J. Godfrey when he's that low. Eden with a basketball left side. Gave it over to Cameron left side. Eight seconds to go in the quarter. Got to hurry if you're Cameron. Godfrey all over him. He'll spin. He'll give in the corner to Eden. That shot's no good. Rebound, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. 
15 to seven, the North Gwinnett Bulldogs lead the East Coweta, Coweta Indians. This is the second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV TV. Cleopatra was the most powerful woman in Egypt. But no one likes a diva, hun. Watching Prime Video, she realized rulers could give back. So she ordered some gifts with Prime. After that, it was more of a one team, one dream kind of vibe. Couldn't give up all the gold, though. Prime changed everything. To seven North Gwinnett Bulldogs over the East Coweta Indians. Second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV, SUV TV. Todd Corden along with my pro broadcast partner, Sylvester Williams. Moss with the ball right side. He'll give it over to Cameron left side. Here's something you said Moss with the ball. Moss was quiet this first, this first period. You know, he hadn't scored, he didn't do anything. So let's see what Moss does. Cameron just gave it over to Moss, right side back over there to Colton. Colton with it being guarded by Allard. Allard guarding him, that's over there to Gillespie. Top of the key over to Cameron, left side. Cameron will get it down low to Delrico Gillespie and we've got a whistle. And, and here's the thing, they want to exploit, they want to exploit Julian Walker down there. Julian Walker, uh, youngster, guarding the Kent State guy. That's why they're kind of going with this zone defense so they can kind of sandwich him around. And now that RJ isn't in the game, you know, RJ usually plays at the top of that zone, but he can come down and help. Come down and help help out a little bit. So now they want to just try to force it down a little bit. That's a great game plan by Coach Maxwell. He wants to get it to him. Get it to his stud. Colton back over there to Adams left side. Being guarded by Allard, now left side to Moss. Moss being guarded by Washington. There's a shot there, that's good. So that's Colton on a three ball. There's a three ball, no good there by Gary. 15-10, six and 52 to go in the first half as they bring it up quickly. There's a three ball in the corner, that's no good from Moss. And they'll bring it up quickly as Grosvenor. Gross Fender dribble drive. He'll give it up there to Julian Walker. And the basket, do they count it? Count the basket. Count the basket by Julian Walker. Let's take a look. Walker, let's take a look at this. And look at that, man. I, I, like, the, I like the take by Walker. Walker knew the contact was coming, but he still managed to get up there and avoid the contact. Well, I mean, he got some of the contact and lay it in, man. Nice take by Julian Walker. Julian Walker, the center for the Bulldogs, 17 to 10. Averages about uh, eight points a game. Six and 40 to go in the second quarter, trying to complete the three point play. It's up and it's no good, hard off the back of the rim. The rim was not kind to him and Del Rico Gillespie on the rebound and they already got it up there to Cameron. Cameron got it back from Gillespie. Now the Give it over to Moss, right side. Three ball by Colton, no good. Rebounded by Cameron. His pass over to Gillespie, off the glass and in. Here's yep. Godfrey, yep. excuse me, Godfrey with a basketball being guarded by Adams. He'll give it up. There's a floater in and out there from Grossvenner, and we've got a whistle. Del Rico's another kid, man. When he is that low, that close to the basket, man. <laughs> You, you might as well put the two points in the basket and just you put the two points in the book and just turn around, man. Pass went off. Let's see. I think it'll still be the Bulldogs' ball at will. 17-12, 6-9 to go in the second quarter. The Bulldogs over the Indians. 
Pass there to Allard. Allard, long, deep three, no good off the front of the rim. Rebounded, and I think that's going to be a foul on Julian Walker. It is. I'm telling you, man, he shot that one all the way from Peachtree Industrial. He almost shot it from my house in Cherokee <laughs> County. I'm telling you. But, but here's the thing about it. When you shoot that, when you have a player who shoots that shot and then he doesn't even look back at the coach or the coach doesn't even look at him kind of funny, that means he could probably hit the shot. <laughs> that means everybody in the gym knows he can hit the shot. Most kids, if they shoot that shot and they know that's out their range, they're looking back at the coach and the coach is looking, staring them dead hard. Coach Garden didn't even look at him. He said, hey, man, that's your shot. Shoot it. Trust the key word there. Cameron with a basketball, gave it over to Moss. Now left side to Colton. Now right, right to Cameron. Cameron will give it back over to Colton. Colton back over to Cameron, being guarded there by Gary. Now he got it over to Cameron. Cameron dribbled drive, he slipped. Got it over to Moss. Moss being guarded by Gary. Left side now over to Cameron, back over to Moss, and, or excuse me, over to Colton, and we've got a whistle. Got a timeout, Coach Maxwell wanted to call the time. We have flying squirrels here in Georgia, southern flying squirrels to be exact. This time of the year, critters love to get in our attics where it's warm, not just on, not just on Breda's uh, watch. Breda Pest Management proudly supports Georgia high school basketball. See more at BredaPest.com. 17, 12, 5, and 30 to go in the second quarter. What do you expect here moving forward? Well, here, here's the thing. If you're East Coweta, you got to stop these open threes. Like right now, um, North Gwinnett has three three-pointers. They have three, and they were three wide open threes. East Coweta has to do a better job of closing out on the three-point shooter. Now, North Gwinnett, they have to do a better job on the inside, and there you go. That's a nice tap away on the inside. Good help side defense there on the alley-oop pass. They'll bring it up right side, get a down low to Gary. He'll give it back out over to Carlberg for three, and that's good. And that's the fourth three they made so far, and that's been the difference in the game. And you saw that touch pass that Allard, Allard got. It went to him, and as soon as it touched his hands, he sent it back to the Gunner, and Gunner knocked down that open three, man. Great job of great ball movement for North Gwinnett. Colton with a basketball. He just got it over to Cameron, right side. Now over to Gillespie. Gillespie just got it to Moss. That shot is in and out, no good. Rebounded there by Godfrey, and they get it up quickly. Over to Carlberg, over to Allard. Now over to Godfrey, the other Godfrey. That would be Grant Godfrey in the basketball game. Little brother passed it to big brother. I saw that. Dribble drive, kick out, off the glass. No good, the iron wasn't kind there. And they put it back in, and that's our that's Godfrey on the putback, and it's 2012 with four and 14 to go in the second quarter. And just too big and too strong, RJ Godfrey. That's the only thing you can say about him. Seems like the offensive rebounds are hurting East Coweta. That and three ball. Yeah. Getting on those offensive boards, you have to do a better job of blocking out, you know, and, and rebounding. You know, it's about finding a man. It's about putting your body on a man. But most important, it's about desire. It's about wanting to get the ball, you know. You don't have to be the most outstanding leaper, the most outstanding jumper. You just want to have to want to go and get it. That free throw short. That's picked up there by Del Rico Gillespie. They'll bring it up quickly. Cameron just got it over there to Brian Gillespie. Spinning is Colton, got it over there to Cameron. Back over to Colton, being guarded by Gary, left side. Colton will dribble drive baseline. Get it over there to Del Rico Gillespie. Shot and in and out. We've got a whistle. See, I like that. I like the action they were trying to do. They wanted to clear out that side to get that little two-man game. And then when he attacks the basket, give it, off, give it off to Del Rico and let Del Rico, he has to hit that shot, though. We're going to need you to hit that baseline shot. If you're, if you're an East Coweta Indian, you gotta hit that baseline shot. Del Rico's brother, Brian, out in the game, uh, out, in the, out on the court. 3 and 52 to go in the quarter. Second quarter, 22-12. North Gwinnett over East Coweta. Going to the line will be 
Del Rico, Gillespie. Big brother on the line. He'll take a dribble, and the first one is good. Ten-point game now. Nice form for the Nine big Nine-point point game. That high arcing free throw. Look how high he gets it up over his head when he releases it. Second one is no good. Rebound there, Allard, and they'll bring it up very quickly. Left side there is Grosvenor. Now he's on the right side. He'll dribble drive. Floater's good. What a shot there by Amaru Grosvenor. Now the rebound off the glass and no good there by Gillespie and the iron wasn't kind to him at all there. That was in and out. Nope, and they call they also call that foul. They call a push underneath. I right. think they call that one on little Gillespie. They called that on the little brother. They did. Let's see what happened. Right. Well, wait a minute, they might have called. Oh yeah, they called it in while he got that rebound, before he got the rebound. Yep. 24 13, 3 and 25 to go in the first half. Bringing the ball up there is Grosvenor. Now we've got a whistle, and that's going to be on Cameron, the foul, and he'll take it side out. Yeah, you heard the smack. You heard the smack all the way over here. They just pushed. We're going to get, we might get a technical here. He just pushed him. That was not good. No, the officials would discuss that, and you can't do that. He may go over and apologize to him. Let's see. No, I guess not. It's a miracle he didn't get a technical. I'm wondering if we can see that again. Well, well you know, you know what I like though. I like the fact here he, it is. I like the fact he didn't get a technical. I like he didn't get a technical. Referees came in here and they just calmed the situation down. They just calmed the situation down. And, and I, I like this. I like this out of the officials. I like this out of the officials. They calmed the situation down, and they said, hey, let's play ball. They don't want to be, they don't want to decide the game with foul calls and technical calls. So they calmed the situation down, and I appreciate that out of officials. Allard will inbound the basketball. 3 and 19 to go in the second quarter. He'll get it over there to Godfrey. Godfrey will give it over to Grosvenor. Grosvenor with it. Being guarded there by Cameron. Over there to Godfrey, and now they got it left side over there to Gary. There's a three ball, good by Allard. Thomas Allard, and he averages 10 a game, and he can't miss right now. I'm telling you, man, he likes it up in this gym, man. He loves playing at home. The kid has such pretty form. He's one of the, he's just one of the best catch and shoot players you're gonna see in a long time, man. When he catches it, he's already in shooting position. Cameron with it left side, got it over there to Vance. Vance will dribble drive and kick it out. Or excuse me, that was Eden. Apology on that. He'll bring it up. Gross Fenner will dribble drive off the glass, no good. Rebound there by Gary, that's it. Now Cameron with a basketball and we've got a timeout. 29-13, 2 and 34 to go in the second quarter. On, on this play, Gary was underneath the basket when that shot went off. He hustled and went all the way down court and snuck in and got that rebound. He could It was no need for him to run down the court. He saw his man was going to lay it up, but he didn't quit. He kept running down the court, and he was ratting in the right place to get the rebound and lay it up. Eden failed to box out, and so did Del Rico Gillespie. And if you don't box out, they're going to take it and put it off the glass. And that's what they did there. And to me, the difference in the game, I'll say it again, it's the three ball and the rebounding. Mm -hmm. It the, is, there. that's been the difference so far. The three ball and the offensive board. North Gwinnett is killing, is killing East Galweta on the board. Look at that three ball there. Nothing but net. I'm telling you, man. If you give, if you give a large spot, if you give him a couple of inches, that's all he needs. If he can see that basket, he's gonna make you pay. They'll inbound it. Will Adams? He'll get it up to Cameron. Cameron right side. Grossvener will take him. Grossvener. 
still with it is Cameron. Now he'll get it over there to Colton. Colton left side. Colton will dribble drive stop and good pass underneath. Good lay it in there. Good basket by Moss off the glass. That's a great pass by Colton. Just a great find. From the corner, shot no good there by Gary. And we've got a player hit the deck. That's Moss. And here we have it. It's a 14-point ball game with, you know, just under two minutes to go. I did not see this happening. I did not see this happening. And right now, East Coweta has to just hold the ship, hold the ship together, hold the ship together until halftime. <laughs> they, this, is, this is not what they expected down there in uh, Sharpsburg, Georgia. Long three ball there by Colton. That was a good-looking shot. Colton has been the bright spot tonight. That's his third three-pointer from Colton. Now Allard with a basketball. They'll swing it all the way around to Carbore. Get it back over to Grossfenner. Grossfenner will dribble drive, kick it out. There's a shot there from the side. <laughs> Godfrey shot it, and they just put it up for the rebound and put it in. Again, offensive rebound. Well, no, that one hit every piece of the rim, and it fell in for Godfrey. He yeah, did yeah, but I mean, yeah, right. I mean, but the still, though, they're not in position for the offensive mm -hmm. rebound. Yeah, Godfrey got that to roll. Let's, Let's take, take a look take at a it look again. At it. See, if, see if we can. Did he get? See, that, that's that living right roll right there. That's when you've been living right. You've been eating your vegetables, saying your prayers at night. You get that living right roll. That's what that one was right there. <laughs> Grant Godfrey on the round of the world shot of the rim, and it went in. And so now Del Rico Gillespie will go to the line, and 31-18, one and five to go in the second quarter and just they weren't rebounding there when that three you know that shot went in there's the miss they'll bring it up will allard dribble drive there by washington kick it out there's a three ball that was partially blocked and we have a whistle yep del rico got a got a piece of that one going up he sure did did they call a I think they call a foul on the box they out. They did. They, they call that foul on the box out. On the box out underneath. On underneath. So now they'll, I believe they'll shoot one and one. Yep. Uh, both teams, both teams are in the bonus. They're in right the now. bonus, right, with 54.9 to play. You in know. the first half, this will be one and one, and Moss will go to the line. The new GHSA rules, you know, they reset the foul count at the end of each quarter. It's six fouls now. If it's six fouls, you're in the one and one. Eight fouls, you're in the double bonus. And they reset them at the end of each quarter. Samuel Moss going to the line. The senior. And it's good. So he'll get another opportunity. 19 to 31. 31 19 lead for the Bulldogs over the Indians. Boy, when you're behind, free throws are so critical. You've got to hit them. Because here's the thing, man. You're scoring. You're cutting into the lead with the clock stop. That's how big free throws are. Moss will take a couple dribbles with it. And it's good. So now we've got a 31-20 game, and here comes the press. Allard got the basketball. Being guarded there by Adams. He'll bring it across the timeline. Now he's double teamed. He'll get it over there to Watson. Watson got it to Godfrey, and he they missed Allard with a pass, and they turn it over. Now, now here's the thing. They're sitting, Gary sitting, Gary sitting, and RJ sitting for North Gwinnett. Coach Gardner's trying to get some seconds of rest, let his guys get some rest with this 11-point lead going into, the, going into the half. Now, East Coweta has to capitalize on this. They have to make them pay for sitting there two stars, to go, sitting these two stars for that long of a period. Colton with the basketball right side, 27 seconds to go in the second quarter, being guarded by Allard, and he got the roll, the floater. 11 points for Austin Colton. So now, 31-22, they'll probably hold it for the last shot. Will North Gwinnett, they bring it up left side. 
Got it there to Grant Godfrey. Godfrey lost it, turnover. Got to hurry and shoot it. No good by Cameron, and that will be the end of the first half with North Gwinnett leading East Coweta 31-22. This is the second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV TV. more from your box score with Cerebro Sports, the official analytics partner of SUV TV. Start with stats with Cerebro Sports and make every game count. Visit CerebroSports.com for more information and check us out at all SUV TV events. At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI, and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, trust CDW Amplify Development Services. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your Buick parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kinda got a six sense. And a head-up display. They're here. Hey, it's the field, warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life. Because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. And the next winning numbers are 18, 18 55, 39, 71, 10, and 43. 43? Those numbers again. We won! Yes! <laughs> Quick! The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. I'll hold on to that. Bounty. The Quicker Picker Upper. GMC Sierra, with hands-free driving, offers the most advanced and luxurious pickup in its class. Yeah, it rocks. Time to call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. You want to go out, Walter? Let's go. Get out! Watch the ball, sir! Pace yourself. Beside the crystal mountain. So come with me. We'll go and see. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. It's a Chevy Silverado Trail Boss. This thing's built for off-roading right from the factory. No, I meant the cat. It's like nobody's seen a cat before. The Chevy Silverado Trail Boss. Find new friends. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Social media doesn't really feel very social these days. Sure, we get to see our friends, but it's so much better to be with them. And even though we're more connected, we miss being together. Tap into what's happening right now and meet up with friends, old and new. With the only social network that's designed to get you offline and back into life. 
swoop in. Let's hang. It was always a tradition in the family to play saxophone. My mom was a saxophone player. <laughs> I started playing in the seventh grade. It makes me happy to know that he's following my footsteps. I'm, I'm really honored. My mom was taking me on a college tour at Shaw University, and I was just like, oh, look, DJ, that's the McDonald's I used to go to. This McDonald's is so important because it ended up being a place where our band members would go to get to know each other outside of the band room. Oh, you, 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 no, you. It's definitely like our student union. <laughs> but with fraud. <laughs> for our crew to go to that same McDonald's she went to, such a big deal for me. And up, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Two clap for the you. You! Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? <laughs> oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Don't worry, Ma, we'll be there soon. We? Is this the one? Well, let's say I found the one who takes me to another level. Always stays calm under pressure. Most importantly, the one that helps me discover the coolest places. This sounds wonderful. Come outside, I'll introduce you. They're here. Definitely the one. <laughs> Introducing the all-new Nissan Frontier. Pizza Hut stuffed crust is the crust that made crust good. Top the stuff with over a half pound of cheese. What are you so afraid of? Loving it? Original stuffed crust, just $12.99. Only from Pizza Hut. No one on Pizza Hut. Once upon a time, there lived a princess with really long hair who was waiting for a prince to come save her. But really, who has time for that? Let's go. Fill myself. She ordered herself a ladder with Prime one day delivery, and she was out of there. Now, her hairdressing empire is killing it. And the prince, well, who cares? Prime changes everything. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. Twenty-two here in the here at the half. North Gwinnett leading East Coweedon. Second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV TV. Todd Court along my broadcast partner, Sylvester Williams. And Sylvester, let's talk about the first half. The three ball from Al Allard and Carlberg really hurt East Coweedon along with the play from Gary. Both, both of them, Allard and Kyle Berg, both of them have two three-pointers, and they were wide open three-pointers. I'm talking about knocking down three-pointers, and then Dylan Gary, he added one to it, but Dylan Gary, he ends up with nine points in the first half with just some nice moves getting to the basket. What's killing, what's working so well for North Gwinnett are the offensive boards and getting wide open threes from those offensive boards. They are dominating the offensive glass. And it, they only have four points from R.J. Godfrey. R.J. Godfrey, the Clemson commit, the All-State player, region player of the year, they only have four points from him. They don't need him to do damage right now, up by nine, not doing much damage with your all-world player. So if he gets involved, this thing could get ugly. 
long way to go. Only a nine point game for, um, for East Coweta. They need to get Gillespie going. He had what, seven at the half? At the half, Gillespie, he had seven points. Del Rico, he had seven points, five rebounds. Right. And he missed a couple of bunnies on the inside. They worked with him on the inside, but he couldn't hit that nice little baseline jumper that he hits. But as you see, everything that was down low near the basket, he couldn't be stopped. What's East Coweta going to have to do? They're going to have to get that inside out going, game going. Austin Colton. Austin Colton on the outside, he has been killing them. Well, right there, he came with the floater. That's his only field goal he's had. Everything else he's had have been outside. Three three balls from Austin Colton. So that inside outside game between Del Rico and Austin, it has to pick up in the second half. Let's see what they bring, man. Long way to go, and, 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 and help side defense is so important in rebounding, and I just think it hurt East Coweta greatly in the first half. Yes, yes they, they couldn't close out on those shooters. In North Gwinnett, they are known for knocking down these threes in this building. They're going to knock them down, and if you can't close out on those shooters, it's going to be a long night for the East Coweta end. Allard with a basketball being guarded by Colton here to start the second half. He'll get it all the way over there. Left side, Allard with it being guarded by Colton. He's in trouble, he looks for a pass, is intercepted by Cameron. Cameron going all the way to the hole, laid it off, laid it in. Good start for East Coweta on the turnover. Nice move by Joshua Cam Cameron, man. Getting that ball, getting in the passing lane, laying it up. Avoiding Carlberg to lay it up. Carlberg driving there and we've got a foul and it's gonna be on Cameron. Team first uh, here in the third quarter. They'll inbound the ball with Carlberg. Standing in front of him is Cameron trying to block his vision. They get it down there to Godfrey. Godfrey will spin and turn and good pass there, but it went off Julian Walker and went right to Gary. Now driving is Godfrey, and that's good. And that I don't care what kind of defense you play there, that was a tough shot. Yeah, he just told he told Adams, you weren't the answer. <laughs> You're just too little down there, little man. <laughs> You're too little. Moss with the ball, left side, got it over there to Colton. Colton with the left side being guarded by Carlberg. Colton will call the play. Get it over there to Adams. Adams back over to Colton. They get it down to Cameron. Cameron, nice pass over there to Gillespie, and that didn't work out. It's a great challenge by Julian Walker. Sure was. And that, let's see whose ball it is. North Gwinnett ball. Great it job. Is be North Gwinnett great ball. job by Julian Walker, man, of getting up, changing the direction of shots, getting his hand on the shot, getting the block. Great job on the interior by Julian Walker. No doubt about it. Godfrey with a basketball. He'll bring it up, being guarded by Adams. Godfrey with it, and Adams took it away. He left it out for him. Adams will drive right to the basket. That's blocked by Godfrey, but is picked up by Eden, and he laid it off the glass, and turnovers have helped East Coweta get right back in it. And right now, Godfrey, he needs to just go down to the block. He can't stay on the outside against Adams, but he can power Adams all day long. Get rid of it. Right now, Godfrey, get rid of it and go to the block. Let's see if he goes down there. Look at him. He got rid of it, going, trying to work down on the block. That's Look at him. Give him the ball. Give him the ball. He's got it now. He'll spin and kick it out to Gary for three, and that's good left side. If you get the ball to Godfrey in that position, he's going to make the right decision. Driving to the basket there was Del Rico Gillespie. He missed it. He should have been fouled. That, that should have been a foul on that one. Allard has it, gave it down there to Gary. Nice pass, and slam dunk by Julian Walker. Nope, they're gonna call that charge. Good job, look at, look at this. Setting himself up, big man setting himself up and taking the charge. Right before the slam dunk. Putting correct. his body in position, taking one for the team. Good job right there by Del Rico. I like how East Coweed has came out. They've taken their defense and turned it into offense here in the uh, second half as East Coweed is scoring on turnovers. Colton with a the basketball. They've had 
two baskets on turnovers has East Coweta here in the second half. There's Del Rico Gillespie, and that's good. Now it's 36-28, eight-point game, five minutes to go, third quarter. That's that little mid-range big man jumper that we like. That's what you want to see out of your big man. Gary with it, left side being guarded by Moss. Right side over to Lard. Got it, got it down to Godfrey. He'll spin and turn. Tough shot with two guys on him. Gillespie was one of them, and Adams was the other. They're, they're going to call that on Adams. <laughs> and I hate to say it, but Adams is not the answer. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of heart for Adams, <laughs> but not enough behind. <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta have a little bit more in the seat of your pants when you're taking on R.J. Godfrey, man. R.J. Godfrey to the line. First one is good. And 37 28, 4 and 47 to go, third quarter. The Clemson commit made the first one. And, and here's the thing about Adams, man. Ad Adams is a great perimeter defender. So when RJ wants to play around on the outside, you know, he can lock him down and he can control him on the outside. But when RJ decides to go on the block, yeah. We might second, want to switch. Second one is good. There's a jump shot there by Del Rico Gillespie. No good. Here they come on the break. Gary with it off the glass. That's blocked. Blocked by Adams. And here they come with it very quickly is Eden. He goes off the glass, and the iron wasn't kind for him, and he just missed. And that foul there was on Carlberg. And, and, and Adams... I gave Adams a lot of a lot of grief on his defensive side against RJ, but he came over the top. Look at him. Come over the top and pin it off the backboard. Look at him. He said he could hear you, Sylvester. He heard me. He heard me talking about no it. No doubt about it. The first free throw is missed there by, by Vance. Now, 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 Jordan Eden, and he has to, these, these free throws are huge for Eden. You got to knock these things Second down. Second one is good. For Vance and 38-29. Oh. Switch numbers on me there. Oh. Inbound the ball. Adams got it over to Malt, uh, Colton. Colton will dribble drive and oh, slam dunk by Del Rico Gillespie, and oh my, that rocked the rim there. There you go, watch your head, man. The, the supports are still shaking on that one. Driving in the basket there is Godfrey, and he's fouled. And see, and see what's Godfrey doing? Look at this. Look at him attacking the basket. Godfrey going to the basket, being more aggressive this period, getting to the free throw line. 38-31, four and two to go in the third quarter. North Gwinnett leading, the first free throw is good. Godfrey having a pretty good night from the line, Godfrey mm -hmm. is. Three for three from the line so far. Yep. See, did we put the announcer's curse on him? Nope. Nope, not at all. And we're going to get a timeout. The Georgia High School Association is a voluntary nonprofit organization composed of, four, of over 460 public and private high schools. The GHSA administrators regulations for region and state competition in 19 sports and two activities founded in 1908. The GHSA strives to promote good sportsmanship, participant safety, and fair play among its member schools. For more information, visit ghsa.net. Follow at official ghsa on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. The Georgia High School Association would like to thank its corporate partners for the valuable support of high school athletics and activities. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance, Georgia Electric Membership Corporation, Gatorade Wilson, BSN Sports, Atlanta Hawks, Mizuno, Atlanta Braves, Subway Sports Medicine South, Atlanta Track Club, NFHS Network, Regions Banks, Max Prep, GoFan, and Georgia Public Broadcasting. 40-31, four minutes to play in the third quarter. The Indians bring the basketball up. Adams with it left side. Adams just got it over to Eden. Eden with it left side. Eden over back over to Adams. 
over to Colton, right side, being guarded there by Grosvenor. Now left side over there to Eden. Now right side, shot there by Colton, no good, rebound and had a shot blocked was Eden and here they come on the fast break and laid it in was Godfrey. That's a Godfrey could have passed and he said, no way, I'll just take it myself, big fella. That's a great job of body control by the big man to avoid. He had a man trying to set up to take that charge and look at the big man in the open court. Look at him in the open court. Avoid the man who wants to take the charge, man. Great job. You know, not too many. And, and, and now that I look at the replay, the young man who wanted to take the charge, he didn't step all the way in front of him. You don't want to step in front of that locomotive when it's coming down the track. He made a business decision there <laughs> is what he made. That's what a business decision, exactly. <laughs> Jordan Eden missed the first free throw, and, and there was no doubt that was a business decision. He's like, you know what, I would like to be able to go on and have some life after high school basketball. <laughs> So, Eden missed the first one. 42-31, three and 22 to go. Third quarter, second one is no good also. And Tough shooting on the free throw line from Eden. He's uh, one out of four. Dylan Gary on that rebound and dribble drive off the window. And oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, Amaru Grosvenor just made a circus shot. I'm telling you, man, look at Grosvenor take it right here going coast to coast by himself. So, and, and the thing is, they were holding his arm when he got it up there. The strength to get it up there, that's even, that's even impressive also, man. Amaro nice move by the senior. That's what you call a circus shot by Grosvenor. And if um, we could see that one more time, I was just, that was unbelievable. Watch this. I mean, this is incredible. He's all over him is Eden, and they called the foul, obviously not. Eden just completed the three-point play. Wow. 45-31, three and eight to go. Tough play by that senior point guard. No doubt about it. Moss just gave it up. They get it down low to Adams. Adams, the three ball to Cameron. That's good. Nice shot by Joshua Cameron. Joshua Cameron on the three ball, and... Here comes the guy who made a spectacular circus shot the last time down the court, Grossvenner. And he just got it over to Carlberg. Carlberg with it. Right side over to Lard, Lard, Lard on the jumper. No good, and uh, he's fouled. Cameron on that three pointer, he was the first person besides Austin Colton to knock one down for, uh, for East Kyle Weeder. Nice shot by Joshua Cameron, he didn't even hit the rim. Didn't even hit the rim. Allard with a basketball, the first one's good. 46-34, two and 37 to go in the third quarter. Thomas Allard, senior guard, averages 10 a game. Second one is no good. Picked up there by Adams, he'll get it up to Colton right side being guarded by Carlberg and Colton almost made that three. The iron wasn't kind. Rebound and picked up by Gary. Gary left side. Gary will give it over to Carlberg, swing it all the way over to Lard. Lard over to Grosvenor. Grosvenor with it. Grosvenor with it. Dribble drive. Loss of basketball and I believe he's fouled. And in the one and the one already, man. Picking up those little quick knick-knack fouls, those little touch fouls. Now you're in the one and one if you're North Gwinnett. And they can push this thing all the way out of reach by knocking down these free throws. Amaro Grosvenor, point guard, averages about nine points a game for the senior. First one is good. Six points for Amaru. Two for two from the free throw line. 47-34, no good. Rebounded by Del Rico. Two, two and ten to go in the quarter. There's a pretty good move there by Cameron, and they do call the foul. What, who did they call that one on? Let's see here. Oh, that's on uh, Julian Walker. Walker. They call that one on Walker. Either he called the first one or the second and one. I think it was a second attempt. 
First shot, the free throw there by Anser Adams. That's no good for the senior guard. When, when East Cal Weedle watches film tomorrow, they're going to kick themselves over these free throws. These free throws are really, really hurting East Cal Weedle. They're having a chance at the free throw line. It could be a completely different game if they were shooting at least 60%. I, know, I think they probably shoot 30%. From the so good. Side. Rebounded there by Julian Walker. And they bring it up very quickly. Right side. Here's Groves, Grosvenor. Now got it out to Allard. Now over to Julian Walker. He's being guarded there by Del Rico. Now he'll give it up there. Shot by Washington. That's blocked. And we all know who blocked it. Del Rico glips me. No yeah. doubt. Those long arms of the law, man. He's a force down there in that paint. But you got to force him to do it. You have to take it to the basket. You can't be afraid, and there's going to be a foul there. That's going to be on Samuel Moss. And 47 34, 1 and 43 to go, third quarter. Amaro Grossbenner will go to the line. This Grossfender is not afraid to take it to the basket, is he? No, nah, not at all, man. Tough kid. Tough kid. And then he has that nice stroke from the free throw line. He's three from three from the charity strike. It's been a huge difference in the game. You mentioned it. Free throws, the rebounding, the three ball, mm -hmm. the no help side defense, and not boxing out. There, the second one's good. It's one of those things that everything that North Gwinnett is doing right, East Coweed is doing He's wrong. wrong. <laughs> no doubt about it. Loose on the floor. Look at Julian Walker getting it, and he does. Here's Grosvenor on the drive. Oh. There, it's blocked there by Adams. Another They'll bring it up block. quickly. That's an excellent block. Dribble drive, give it up, and slam dunk by Del Rico Gillespie in 49 36, 1 and 18 to go in the third quarter. Del Rico throws it down with power, man. Oh. Those supports are still shaking, man. You know, this third quarter, the Indians came out, as you'll see the replay on the slam dunk. They came out, got some turnovers, and got some, you know, the defense turned in some offensive points, and ever since then, it's kind of been downhill. And the thing is, those free throws, which are so huge. East Coweta, I think in this quarter alone, I think they've missed seven free throws. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they've missed seven free throws in this quarter alone. You got to hit the free ones from the charity strike. Crows. Venner, three ball over there to Allard. He missed it. Rebound, and here they come out with it. Cameron with it. Left side, Cameron will dribble drive, take it to the rack, and he's blocked up in the sec. The attempt is good on the follow-up. Look at Answer Adams. Answer Adams getting on the inside. He had the answer. The answer. He had the answer. Him coming here and getting it. You're right, Sylvester. The rebounds, we talked about it. You got to have them. Those, those offensive boards, man. You got to clean up the glass on the offensive side, man, or on the defensive side. Answer Adams, the senior guard at the line to try to make it a 10 point game. No way. Another free throw. Another free throw. Grows Venner with a basketball right side being guarded by Answer Adams. Now he'll. Dribble drive all the way to the basket, give it up. Great pass to Washington. Ethan Washington averages four a game and it's 51, 38, 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Here comes the big fella. He just gave it off, gave it back, and they'll get it back over to Moss. Moss over there to Cameron. Cameron will dribble drive, give it up there to Answer Adams. His shot was blocked and did they call a foul on that? No, I think they call out of bounds. The foot was on the line. Let's see. Foot was on the line. That's young Godfrey up there with the block. Yep. 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 His foot, foot was the on line. the line. I thought, no way did they call foul there. Oh, my goodness. Did you see him try to get to the basket there? Looking for a foul. Wasn't going to be bailed out by the refs on that one. Carlberg with it. Carlberg over to Allard. Allard for a three ball. My goodness, he shot it. And that's rebounded there by Grant Godfrey. Grant Godfrey and put it off the window. And now all of a sudden at the end of the third quarter, 
We have a 53-38 game. Look at Grant clearing it up at the buzzer. Look at him just in time. At the buzzer, the offensive rebound, he'll put it up and put it in. Grant Godfrey. Nobody wants unwanted guests taking up residence in their homes. No, we're not talking about the in-laws. Breda Pest Management protects homeowners from bugs and critters. Breda Pest Management proudly supports Georgia High School basketball. See more at BredaPest.com. And Mr. Williams, this fourth quarter, what do you expect the East Coweta to try to press right away? being down 15. They got to turn up the heat on the defense. You got to turn up the heat on the defense. And, and to be quite honest, man, they got to hit free throws. Free throws are what wins this ball game. Right now, it, it, it's a 15-point ball game. If they shoot 80% from the free throw line, it's probably a four- or five-point game. Just that much. You know, just missing – those gimmies missing those easy free throws, you will never win the game missing easy free throws. The fourth and quarter coming up, Adams will inbound the basketball, will answer Adams. We'll start the fourth quarter and 15 point game. Nope, Cameron will go ahead and do it. That's Joshua Cameron. He'll inbound it to Colton, and here we go to start the fourth quarter. Colton's been Colton quiet. with the basketball. Yes, he has it right now. Colton over to Cameron. Good pass there. Lay it off the glass. No for Moss, and we've got a whistle. That, that was one of those. It was the right call, but whoa, whoa was it late. <laughs> well, now they're going to the line, and this has been the big bugaboo, and let's see if they can start off the fourth quarter on a positive note. And, and Samuel Moss, the senior, has a chance to put a couple free throws down with no time moving. That's important. That's important. Free throws are so huge. Like I said, you're cutting the lead with the clock frozen. First one is good, and this is, like you said, if they made, if they made eight of them, they would be in this thing. Eight more. Mm -hmm. Ten would be huge, but it's a completely different ball game if they can hit some free throws. Second one is good, and now we have a 13-point game. Seven and 48 to go in the fourth quarter. Here comes the press. Yep, that's that fourth quarter. RJ's court. being pressed here by Adams. And Colton, Godfrey gets it across the timeline with help from Allard. Allard with a basketball he, with it now, and they'll set it up down low to Godfrey. Godfrey will get it back to the other Godfrey. So that was Grant Godfrey to RJ Godfrey, and now 55-40. Little brother to big brother. Do you think they worked that on <laughs> that in the driveway? That's a nice shot. I'm telling you, boy, I, I, I would love to see those driveway basketball games in the Godfrey household. 55-42. R.J. Godfrey with the ball. It is poked away from him. That's Good a, effort there by Cameron as he dove to try to get it. That's a little bit out of his comfort zone right there. He Now, if it was a bigger guy out there guarding him, you know, I would have faith in him handling the ball outside. But you got those little guys out there guarding him. That's a whole nother world for R.J. Godfrey, man. These little guys are quick. Carl Berg, who had a couple threes in the first half, gets it over to R.J. Godfrey. Got it down to his brother there, Grant Godfrey. Now over to Lard. Now down low to RJ Godfrey. Over to Grant Godfrey. There's a three ball there by Carlberg. No, but they get the offensive rebound and they'll swing it around. Dribble driving is Gary. He'll kick it out to Lard. That is no good. And here comes these Kawhi on the break. Dribble driving and that basket's no, good no by five? Adams. Wow. I think that might have been a foul down there. Godfrey with it. You're right, this is not his comfort zone. He almost took it away twice. Oh, yeah, that's an that's offensive foul. That's an offensive foul, foul. you're oh, correct. No, he called traveling. He got bailed out. He called traveling. You're right. I, I, thought, I thought that was an offensive foul. I thought he threw the shoulder. Me too. Look, look, look at the replay. Oh, oh no he, doubt. Yeah, he got away with one. He, he got away with one because that should be a foul on Godfrey. But now you see East Kyle Wheaters turned up the heat on his defense, you know. 
Colton with a basketball. 55-44, 6 and 20 to go in the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. Cameron with it. I have a feeling this uh -oh. is not over, even though he turned it over. He wanted to. Carlberg has it. Don't let him shoot the three. He'll get it down low. And oh, what a move by Gary. Dylan Gary. Dylan man. Gary, wow. Colton with it over to Del Rico. Gillespie back over to Colton. Five and 50 to go, fourth quarter, 57-44. Colton directing traffic. Over to Adams and we've got, oh, I thought I heard a whistle. Must, that shot was blocked. I thought I heard two whistles out on the floor. It's somebody on somebody the sideline. Somebody has line. a whistle. Yes, you can't do that. Somebody on the sideline has a whistle, and they got to find that because it, 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 we keep hearing the whistle. That, that wasn't the first time we heard that, man. It's, I heard that. I've heard it several times. They'll inbound the ball, will Carlberg. And I can't believe that R.J. Godfrey's bringing the basketball up. This shocks me. I know it does you, too. Mm -hmm. There's a three ball there by <laughs> Dylan Garion was the iron kind for him and rolled around the world. And timeout, 60-44, 5 and 28 to go in the fourth quarter. Watch this. Look at him. Go and pluck the arrow, Gary. Look at him. Hey, that's that, what I say, that's that living right roll, man. You get, you get that roll when you've been living right. Gary's living right. North Gwinnett's living right. This is the second round of the end of the uh, GHSA playoffs here on SUV TV. The Bulldogs lead the East Coweedy Indians 60 to 44, 5 and 20 to go in the fourth quarter. Cameron with the basketball. Got it over there to Moss. There's a shot from the corner. Good. Cameron, Cameron knocks down his second three. Excellent three by Cameron. 13 point game. Allard with it. Good. Uh, there's a turnover, another turnover. They have a chance to turn it into points here. Driving all the way to the basket is Cameron. He missed it. There, Moss had his shot blocked, but I believe he's fouled. Turning, their offense is turning into, you know, their defense is turning into good offense. Turning into good offense. Now, now, here's the thing, though. I need him to get rid of that ball earlier coming down the court off of that steal. You, you're going down to a one-on-three break. You got to get rid of it, man. You know, get rid of it, pull it out, do something. I know you. I know you. You look at the scoreboard. You're down 13. You're down big, and you want to score, but you can't force it. If it's not there, you just don't have it. Samuel Moss will go to the line, and these are huge. The clock is stopped on the free throws, and this is where you can catch up without having to use time from the free throw line. And we mentioned it tonight. They've missed a ton. That one's good. 60-48, 4-55 to go in the fourth quarter. Still plenty of time to catch up. Moss, the lefty, he's been the only bright spot from the free throw line. Right now he's 5-5 five from five from the charity shot. Everybody else on East Calweta, East Calweta has been horrible. Let's see if he makes this one here. Second one is no good. Rebounded there by Allard. I put the announcer's jinx on him. You sure did. Groves Venter with a basketball. Groves Venter with it being guarded by Cameron. Groves Venter.
still with the ball. Are they going to yeah. call that foul? On? No, they're not. They're going to call the seconds. offense. Oh, five, and, five seconds closely guarded. I thought he uh, thought he might have pushed a little when they were going to call the offensive foul, but evidently not. Mm. They, I guess not. But see what happens. He had the ball, and right. then he started to bring it back while he was dribbling, but the defender didn't drop back. Defender stayed on him. So that five-second count is still going. I saw that hand on the little bit of the push there. There's Del Rico. He had a shot blocked, but he got it back. Here he goes again up, and that one's no good. Rebound still loose. Here's the thing. When we look at the stat book tomorrow, we're not going to see impressive numbers by Julian Walker, but he has played an impressive game. Oh, I, yep, I He's agree. been all over the defensive side all game long, Julian Walker has. He's been challenging shots, blocking shots. He's just been a pest down there down low, man. There's a turnover, and it's picked up by Gary, left side. Gary just got it over there to Carlberg. Back over to Gary. He'll drive baseline. His pass is knocked out of bounds by Colton, and you mentioned it, Julian Walker on the block of Del Rico Gillespie down here on the other end. Those plays, they show up in the stat book, but they're so much bigger. Yep, so much bigger than what you'll ever see. And then the shots that he's changed, he's altered. Oh, here's a turnover. And Del Rico Gillespie will go to the basket, and he's fouled. Fouled there by Gary. Hey, you know, that's a good play by Gary. Good play by Gary. It's a foul. Of course it's a foul. But he stopped the easy basket. What he did, he got his hand on the arms and the ball to stop that basket. That is a good foul. That's a really good foul. That's a great foul because if he doesn't foul him, it's a layup or a dunk. First mm -hmm. free throw is no good by Del Rico Gillespie. And, and the thing what makes it even better is he did not allow him to even get the shot out. A lot of kids, they'll commit the foul to kind of stop the basket, but they'll still allow him to get the ball up. That's a great foul by, by, uh, by Dylan. No doubt about it. Here comes his second free throw. And that's good. 11 point game, four minutes exactly to play and here comes the full court pressure. Eden guarding Grossvenner. Grossvenner just got it over left side over to Allard, or right side over to Allard. Allard with a basketball. Grossvenner, Grossvenner calling for it. There's a pass from Carlberg that was tipped and intercepted coming coast to coast with off the glasses. Good for Cameron. Joshua Cameron makes it a nine point game, three and 35 to go in the fourth quarter. Left side with it. Grosvenor, oh, nice move there. Now good defensive play there by Adams. They get another turnover. Here they come up with it. Cameron going to the basket. Got it over there to Del Rico Gillespie and all of a sudden a seven point game. Their defense is turning into offense. Coach Gardner has seen enough. He says, we need a timeout. And the East Callaway to Faithful, they traveled all the way up from Sharpsburg, and they are on their feet over there behind them. Look at that, man, turning defense into offense. How many times have you said it? You've said it so many times tonight, turning defense into offense. That's what the Indians are doing, man. They're trying to make this thing a game. This is what I like, man. It's senior, no one. It's the last game. You're senior. It's no tomorrow for you. When you lose, it's it. These, hey, these kids, they don't want to go home yet. They well, don't want to go home yet. And you, and you mentioned about going home. For a lot of these kids, these seniors, most of these kids don't play college basketball. This is it. This is it right here. So th their defense is laying it all on the line. They've caused the turnovers. And now we could have a barn burner at the end. Two years ago in this very spot, we had a double overtime thriller, a one-point ball game two years ago. Man, we might be doing it again. Chris Youngblood, who's now at Kennesaw State, made the three ball in the second overtime to win it for North Gwinnett. Here we go, my friend. Now, now young, young blood hit it. Young blood hit it for East Cal Weeder to tie it. And um, I, I forgot who hit it for North Gwinnett oh, to win. Oh, they told me that. Oh well. Yeah, yeah young I blood. Young blood hit it for for, for uh, East Cal Weeder to tie it. Oh, okay. Three ball there, no good. Rebound. That shot's blocked. 
picked up, and here they come up with it again. Triple drive by Cameron No. Cameron has to get rid of the ball. You can't take that shot, Cameron. Well, he took it too late. He should have shot it sooner if he's going to shoot it. Going to the basket right off the glass there is Allard, and that's a four-point swing right there. Easily, easily. 62-53, two and 29 to go, fourth quarter partner. I still think it's gonna come down to the end. Possessions mean so much in a game like this. You can't have a wasted possession. Good, good play by Eden, that time he had it blocked. He missed the first one, the second wasn't blocked, and they'll bring it up. Carlberg will, and now it's over to Lard. Lard with it right side. Over there to R.J. Godfrey. R.J. going to the rack, and he missed it. And he was fouled. R.J. taking him up upon himself, going to the hole strong. Foul is on Adams. Answer Adams. And now R.J. will go to the line with two important free throws here. Nine point game with one and 56 left in the fourth. These are big free throws right here, huge free throws. You know, Sylvester, that where they missed it down there on the drive by Cameron, and then they scored, that's a huge four point swing. First one's good. They may look at that as the play that did them in. Uh -huh. if they can't catch up. Back to a 10 point ball game. I think they got it down to seven. And like you say, man, just a couple of four point turnarounds. This will be the second four point swing, just like that. Second one is good. And RJ, who averages 16 a game. We had an 11 point game and got a hurry. One and 50 to play. Cameron left side with it. Cameron just got it over to Moss. Moss got it down low to Adams. Adams spinning and turning, he'll get it back out. Cameron will dribble drive up and good. He'll come with a press now. Allard with it, he'll give it up to his teammate. He'll get it back, that teammate was Washington. Back over to Allard, back over to Washington. They bring it up very well against the press. Being guarded by Adams, he'll kick it back out to Grosvenor. Grosvenor left side with it and he's not in a hurry at all. Being guarded by Adams, he'll go right to the basket. He'll give it up to Washington down low. Give it back out Travel. and I think we've got Travel. So one and 16 to go, nine point game, and East Coweta has to run this thing up the court. They can't dribble it. And this is smart here by Grosvenor to, to make them play good defense. So they don't, so they don't roll the ball right. in. Exactly. Make them work it up the floor and, 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 and like you said, work the clock. Take a little bit of time off that clock. Seconds mean a lot right now. Gotta hurry. Colton with it, left side, got it down low. Good pass. Good pass from Adams to Del Rico Gillespie. 50 seconds to play. Seven point game, that's knocked out of bounds by Cameron, good hustle. And right now is situational awareness. Anytime someone scores a basket, the person taking the ball inbounds, they can run the sideline. You don't have to stand in one spot when someone scores a basket. Now they're taking out on the side. Now he has to stand in one spot now. But young kids know that you can run that sideline to create space for yourself. Foul there on Answer Adams and Amaru Grosvenor will go to the line. And see, this is another thing. I like this. No, he will not go to the line. I like this officiating crew. What the other, what the official did who blew the whistle, he went over to Adams and he said, Adams, you can't wrap him up when you call that foul. He didn't want to make himself be the guy who causes the game. Right. He explained it to the young man. You can't do that. That could possibly be an intentional foul. So now, if he comes and does something crazy again, he's gonna go ahead and give him the tech. Another foul on Adams, and you're right, this is not Friday Night Lights, so you can't do that. Yeah. Still 41 seconds to play, there's still time. Mm -hmm. A Lot of time, a lot of time left in the seven point game. You figure it's a three possession game. And here's the thing, North Burnett got into the bonus really early they did. the last time. 
But now they're not. You know, now East Coweta started playing better defense, and the reward for playing better defense is now you have to foul, and it takes longer to get into the bonus. Right, and it's not such a war unless you get a steal at this point. Now, Carlberg will have it. Carlberg with it. Carlberg, and he's fouled right there by by Cameron. They, they let they let too many they let too many uh too too much time go off the clock on that one. Five seconds. You got to foul him immediately. You got to foul immediately. If you don't get the steal on the inbound, you have to foul. I believe in bringing in the goon squad, bringing in the last five people on the bench and let them foul. And there's a foul there. In a situation like this, I believe in bringing those last five people on the bench. Bring them in the game and just let them foul. Even if you're on the varsity team, you should be able to hit a layup if you get a steal. Even if you are the last five on the bench. I, I call it, my coach used to call it the goon squad. He called it, the, bring in those last five. And then have your starters, have your guys who are ready to play, have them sitting right beside you, and as soon as you're back on offense, put them back in the game. Groves Venter, the senior at the line. These are huge free throws, and that one's good. Eight-point game, 32.4 to play in the fourth, and you see they've, they, they're not taking any chances. They're putting four players down at the other mm -hmm. end. Second one is no good, rebounded very quickly by Owens. He'll bring it up quickly to Eden. Eden on the jump shot, that's no good. Eden got his own rebound. He did get it back out and it's turned over as Colton couldn't get it. And with 22.8 now, you're gonna need a lot of things to happen right. I think that might have been the one. And you hear the student section. Yep. Who sang this song? Huh? We? Oh, Who sang this? I think so. Allard's fouled with 20.8 to go, and he's fouled there by Hey, hey, by goodbye. Keldrick Owens, the senior. And see, he's out here for the last time, potentially. Yeah. And it doesn't hit you until it's over. It doesn't. It doesn't. And just think if you're a parent, oh. it really hits you. Because you're, you, you've watched your kids play all these years, and then when it comes to an end, it's the end. That's it's it. The end. First free throw was good there by... Thomas Allard. But you know, nothing for this East Coweta team to hang their head for. They had, uh, on Tuesday, it was their first home playoff win in almost 40 years. Almost 40 years, the first time they had a home playoff win. Allard with 11. Oh, that pass is intercepted by Allard. Sorry about that. Over to... Gross Venter, and he's just going to dribble it out. They're not going to foul him now. That's going to do it. 67-57 is going to be the final. North Gwinnett will go to the Elite Eight, and East Kawa Kawita season will end. A really good basketball game. 67-57 the final, and the difference, we mentioned it many times throughout the telecast. Rebounding, help side defense and missing free throws did East Coweed in. Free throws, help side defense. You know, sometimes basketball is a game, you know, if you have super, you know, you can be super talented, you can be the best athlete, you can be the best shooter, you can be the fastest guy in the world, but it's always the easy things. It's always the simple things that usually come into play in the end, and rebounding, Help side defense. Free throws. Free throws are in a, a, a stat sheet. It's in the stat sheet, but that help side defense, it's not in the stat sheet, but affects every basketball game, and it affected this one greatly, and that's it for East Coweta. They lose it, and, you know, it was a tough night for them. I really thought, Sylvester, they could have won this basketball game had they hit their free throws because they did get North Gwinnett to turn it over several times. They did, they did, but those free throws, I would love to see the stats at the end of what happened at that charity strike. Tough game, great season for East Kyle Weeder. Coach Maxwell, he'll have these guys back next year, but Coach Gardner, he gets to take his players on.
Take them on to the next round here this, in the GHSA playoffs. Right. This will be the third consecutive year that North Gwinnett is going to go to the East or to the Elite Eight. For Todd Corner, for Sylvester Williams, for all the crew here at SUV TV, want to thank all you listeners. Your final score from North Gwinnett High School, the North Gwinnett Bulldogs win it 67-57 over the East Coweta Indians. This is the second round of the GHSA basketball playoffs here on SUV TV. Good night, everybody. 